everybody. Welcome back to episode 76 of Talk Fame Podcast with your host, Kai Montini. I'm so excited to have on writer and reporter, Erica Francis. Thanks so much for Erica. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you are a writer and reporter. What made you want to start doing that and basically being in this kind of film industry? Entertainment? So I actually got into this my sophomore year of high school. I've always been a performer. I was a singer, a dancer, an actress. And so we had this um, class called West Ottawa Broadcasting News. I thought, oh, that would be so much fun. I get to be on TV. I get to give the announcement. So I signed up. And then obviously I started the class and I started thinking, wait, this is so much more than I ever expected. I got to be behind the scenes, controlling what the newscast looked like. I got to get behind a camera and start telling people stories. And that's where I really found my true love for storytelling and writing. And mm -hmm. I kind of just thought to myself, heck, it's either I go on Broadway and you know sing and dance for the rest of my life, or I can really make an impact in somebody's life. So I stuck with it and I went to Central Michigan University to pursue my career. And here I am. Yeah, I love that. Like, that's kind of how I was. I was like, oh, I'm going to pursue something else at the end of the day. Like, you just kind of turn out to be, like, something you never kind of expected to be. Like, at first you were an actress, singer, and sophomore of your high school, and now you're a journalist, writer, reporter. And, that's, and, like, personally for me, I never expected to, like, do this. I was like, oh, this is, I'm probably going to do something else, like, I don't know, acting or something, that's something <laughs> random, but I never expected to, do, expected to kind of do journalism in this type of way. Like, did you kind of ever kind of expect to do, be a like, reporter, writer type of stuff? Because for me, personally, I was like, I kind of imagine doing this right now. It is so hard. Looking back um, before that class, no, that never even crossed my mind it was always oh I want to be famous I want to be a singer or a dancer or something along those lines and once I did that class like I told you about it really just shifted my thinking and then I was you know I was kind of um I was introduced to it so then once I was introduced to it I thought well this would be such a cool career path and the more I got to learn about what it meant to be a journalist and a writer and a news anchor. I was just so inspired by it. And um, I really found a passion. And like I said, I kind of just stuck with it. And now looking back, it's like, wow, here I am. I did it. Never expected to be where I am now, I'll tell you that. And now I'm curious, I've got a question for you. How did you start this podcast? Because I think it's so incredible what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. So it all basically started back in quarantine last mm. in April. And I come from two journalists in my family that are basically working from a local news station down here in Scram, Scram, Pennsylvania. And I'm really close with one of them. So I'm like always love what she's doing. I always want to do whatever she does in terms of um, what like running or whatever she wants to do. And they put the anchoring. When I see her on TV, I was like, this is pretty cool. I kind of want to do that. But in terms of me, I always wanted to be in the entertainment history, but I didn't know really what I wanted to be. And this is something I kind of didn't think I would do because, like, I was always a very shy kid. So I was like, ah, how is it shy girls to have a podcast? Like, how is that supposed to be possible? And so the back when quarantine started, I was like, well, I kind of have more thought about it and I kind of sat down and I kind of got really bored myself because all I was doing is on my phone 24 7 watching television stuck at home because we couldn't really do anything so we couldn't leave the house so I was like I'm done being lazy like I just want to do something about life instead of being lazy 24 7 and so I was like why not just start a podcast and talk to people in the industry and athletes and all these things kind of just see if I like it. Just try it out. You might never know if you like it or not. And so it's all, it's always worth trying, no matter if you don't like it. And so I I started last year, back in April, and that with Cooper Soros. He's a podcast host with um, Bully Jay's picture, Ross Stripling. And after that episode, I was like, this is amazing. I, this, I think this is what is for me, I think this is something I really want to do in the future, and I want to really do this. Isn't that awesome how life works out like that? Mm -hmm, yeah, it does. Like, this one snap can just like change your life. Like, you in sophomore year of high school, you just did one thing, and this the snaps, and you're starting to love it. That's kind of how it happened for me a little bit. Like, you fell in love with something out of your control, basically. 
Good for you. I loved hearing that story. Thank you for sharing. That was good. And so like, I wanted to ask you, like, when you were like a reporter in like your sophomore of high school, like, did you, um, were you always a person that loved being in front of camera or were you always a person that was like, oh, I like the back behind the camera and was like directing or being in charge of the movie? So I feel like it shifted because when I started, I wanted to always be in front of the camera. And that's, I mean, I, looking back now, I was like, oh, that's so vain. And I hate saying that, but that's the reason I started. Um, and then a few months in, that's when I, I really started to find the love for the behind the scenes. Like being behind a camera and getting, you know, really up close shots of something that the human eye normally wouldn't see is so incredible. And to just create something that's, fun or inspiring or makes a difference, mm -hmm. you know, with your words and the images that you're capturing, that's what I truly love. Like, yes, I'm still in front of the camera, but that's by no means the, the best part of the job. And this is not a glamorous job like it seems. That's what I always tell people when they ask. Like, It just looks like lights, camera, action. It's so easy. It's so perfect. But it's a yeah. lot of hard work. It's very yeah. stressful. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes and you got to grind to get it done. Exactly. Like, that's what happens for me. Like, people think that journalism reporting is so easy. Like, you think, like, oh, you just got to figure out questions and all that stuff. It's, like, so easy. I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, it's not easy as you think it is. Like, like no, not at all. In terms of, like, a podcast or being reported for a news station or something, it's very difficult. Because oh, you need to actually prepare on something. You need to learn the facts about the person or the project you are anchoring on. It's like it's and like you need to actually be prepared on what you want to do because if you're not prepared, then like then kind of screwed. You kind of don't have anything to prepare, and that's how yes. how you will be a good journalist. Is if you become more persistent with your work and become more prepared with your work, then you would become so, 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 uh, successful. Like I kind of I don't know how I kind of speak it today, but like. It's like, that's what it is. Like, if you are persistent with something you love, you need to grind, not listen to other people things. Every position that you do, no matter if it's like acting, like business or something, it's always something, it's very hard, no matter what position it is. You freaking just nailed that. Yes, that was so good. And you can never care about what other people say, or like if somebody says, well, your, your job seems easy. Well then, great, you can think that, I know what my, my job truly is, and if I know I'm making a difference in the world, that's all that matters to me, right? Other people's yeah. opinions, we exactly. don't care. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So you are currently anchoring for WKRN in Nashville. Mm -hmm. What is I the am. Anchor for them for now since you started that for a bit, a bit ago? Okay, so I started here three years ago in june of 2019 before the entire world shut down yeah. um so i report during the day i come in at 9 a.m and then i pitch my story every day and obviously a new topic every day but i i do tend to gravitate towards real estate and growth stories and mm -hmm. economy business yeah. stuff like that business consumer stories so i'll pitch my story coming at nine mm -hmm. then i start getting my interviews okay. and then we put the story together i go over the 4 p.m newscast then i anchor the 4 p.m newscast which is an hour long and then mm -hmm. i'll type up my web script because of course not everything is on the television mm -hmm. we've got to make sure that these things are getting posted on social media and our website wkrun.com so there's a lot of different moving parts but it is really cool to be both a reporter and anchor mm -hmm. because I still get to have that creative side of me and I get to go out and meet people and get that writing aspect in but at the same time I get to hang out with my co-anchor and tell the viewers what's going on um, in their world when I'm anchoring the newscast so I really love having to do both of those yeah for sure like did like what was like the hardest kind of part for you like what's between like anchoring and basically writing all these things like how did you kind of balance trying to do mm. other, other basically for me personally like with editing journalism like it's very hard for me so i kind of wanted to know what your take was on how you basically balance all these things at once Practice makes perfect, and when I first started this, it was very daunting, and it was hard to manage my time because you only have eight hours in the day, 
and there have been times where certain people can't do interviews until noon or 1 p.m. and you're scrambling to get a script to the editor by 2, 2.30 because I had to go over the show that I anchor. Um, so certain days, unfortunately, I'm not able to go over my show. I just have to write my story and what we call cold read my scripts. Um, so I'm still working on it as well. You know, like nothing's ever going to be perfect. I'm still learning. Um, but I have learned to manage my time a little bit better. And like I said, really, it just comes with repetition. And then you just feel more confident and comfortable with things. And I know I need to get my script in every day around 2. So mm -hmm. then I have time to get ready for the 4 p.m. show and I have time to read over scripts and do my web articles and all of that stuff. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. You really just, you got to take some time and just the repetition. That's what helped me. Yeah. Like, what, like that's kind of how it, like, mine was. Like, at first, I just kind of started, like, it was kind of hard for me to deal with because, like, at first, I'm, like, dealing with editing, interviews, like, school, like, and all of these things that I go on in my life. I'm thinking myself, like, how? I need to get this thing done by like three o'clock and my interviews at four and I need to go to the baseball game or something. It's always something that's going on, like you said. And so yep. you think you yeah, need to call read and type things up quick. So you need to get things done. And like, what was like the hardest part for you about being basically doing all these things at once and basically doing all these things, like in terms of like anchoring and writing and trying to do all these things at once and then? I think the hardest thing was firstly time management, but now that I've got that down, I think secondly, the thing that I struggle with is we don't always have enough time to create the perfect story. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I wish I could take three days to create a story sometimes. I'm not given that and I'm a perfectionist and I know that. So I have to tell myself it's okay if a story isn't the best thing in the world as long as you're accurate and you know things look decent and you're getting your words across in a way that people understand it's gonna be okay like with all of this going on in one day every day I started to get a little down because I noticed that sometimes I was rushed and I wasn't able to write the story the way I wanted to but one thing that my mentor told me is that if you have three good stories or like three good days out of five, you're winning. So I try to keep that in my head always. You're not always going to have a perfect day. You can fail certain days, get back up, try again, and make tomorrow a better day. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. And like since like being a journalist and everything, like, do you have anything specifically you like to do in terms of being a good journalist? Do you have anything specific that you do in terms of preparing for like an interview or preparing to anchor? Do you have anything to be kind of prepared for? So when it comes to preparing for interviews, I obviously make sure that I know the topic and I know who I'm interviewing. Um, certain journalists like to write down questions and what have you. I don't like to do that because I feel like it takes away from the, the genuineness of yeah. the the interview and the conversation and of course I do my research but I don't do too much research because I think if you know too much as a reporter you forget to ask certain questions that other people might be wondering so if I have a genuine question as a reporter I feel like the answer comes back in a way that gives me information that the viewer would want to know uh, when it comes to preparing for my show of course I when I have time, I try to go over every single script that's in the hour-long newscast and make sure that everything's typed out in a way that I want to say it, um, everything's spelled correctly. We don't have live interviews, unless there's like crazy breaking news, but we don't have live interviews in the newscast that I anchor, but if we did, I would have to prepare for that as well, know the topic, know who I'm interviewing. Um, there are times where we cover trials, and if we know that there's going to be a verdict in the trial, I always make sure to write down the background of what happened in the trial, who's on trial, what they did, or what they allegedly did or didn't do. Um, I make sure I have all those circumstances kind of bullet pointed out because we ad lib those things when we're going to the shot. So I've got to look at those bullet points and say, okay, so and so is on trial. 
the jury is deliberating right now. This is what we know. We're waiting for this. Because sometimes you get in these predicaments where you're having to ad lib for minutes on end. You're like, oh no, I'm running out of things to say. So when I have that information in front of me and I'm prepared for what could happen, that's always a saving grace because there have been times where I haven't been prepared and it ain't pretty. So yeah, being prepared is important. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so like, there's so many like, of course, things and thing like things that you anchored over like with over stories and trials. For example, mm -hmm. maybe like Johnny Depp trial that's been going on. For example, that I, I have another podcast as well. So me, and my friend, always cover all these trials and everything that's going on and everything. So like. I have like all the stories that you guys kind of covered. What kind of story that kind of sticks out to you the most? Like what kind of gets you excited when you see the story? Uh, the stories that excite me the most are the ones that can really inspire somebody or like make somebody smile. And unfortunately, we don't get that a lot in the news. Yeah. But I always try to find a character from my, for my stories. And just one person can make your story so much better. Mm -hmm. like call them the character and, you know, the way that they speak and the funny things that they say or maybe it's an emotion that they have and kind of writing to that emotion and writing to that character. That's what I love doing and creating stories that – it's like beating the odd stories, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So, like, back in Grand Rapids in my first job – I used to always do health stories about these people that were diagnosed with these crazy diseases and then oh. yeah they beat the odds and it was just really cool to inspire our audience you know just like explain what this certain disease was what they need to know how they should treat somebody who might have that same disease and yeah I don't know it just kind of lit a fire under me oh, yeah, and it made so me much. smile when I saw the, the story come to fruition Oh my god, that's literally like my favorite part too. So mm -hmm. like when I get to talk with you and so many other people, like that's like my favorite part is because like whoever listens to this podcast that I know is my mission for this podcast, something I really want to do is inspire other people to do the same. Yes. As a girl, young girl in Pennsylvania, <laughs> and I have too many role models. I was never saw myself on screen on television. I never saw myself, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I never saw people kind of like me as a kid. And I was like, why not do that for other people? And why not just do this for other people? Because like, I didn't have that as a child. I didn't see myself. I didn't know who I wanted to be. I never kind of thought about what exactly wanted to, wanted to be and everything. So I'm like, why not do that for young girls and women? Because I didn't exactly have that. And like, it would be better to help other people because like if if other girls and women, even, even men don't, have, don't feel inspired, then this is kind of my job to help other people with my guests and what they do and help them feel inspired. Even though they want to be like a journalist, actress, model, baseball player, you name it. Like, if you want to become some of these things, then watch this podcast and you will find some people and you will feel inspired. Oh, I'm so proud of you for doing this podcast because even if you change one person's life or you help one person, it's totally worth it, right? Mm -hmm. I always tell people, dream big and like freaking follow those dreams and don't ever let anybody tell you no. So I love that you're you're having these same thoughts at just 15 years old. Oh my God, thank like, you. Oh you know God. what's going on. You're You're smart. Oh my God, thank you. And so yeah. do you have anyone that you look up to as like a journalist supporter or just kind of in general? Do you have anyone that you look up to? So I really love Robin Mead. Mm -hmm. She is just a little spunky newscaster. And I just love how she's totally herself. She doesn't fake it. She But she like sells the story. And I really feel like I'm just having a cup of coffee with her. And she's telling me the news. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do as a news anchor. Um, I also really look up to Dana Perino on Fox mm -hmm. News. I actually met her in person in Nashville. And she's the nicest human. Oh my gosh. So nice. Yeah. So she was really humble um so it's cool to like watch her on tv now oh my god i met her um but she's the same as robin she just she just tells you the news and it's so chill and she's not fake you know she just acts like a friend in a way and that's what yeah. i i really hope to emulate and do that
in my career as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's so many people that are like journalists that do not like all, sometimes fake and not fake and always say the truth. Yeah. And they, yeah. there's so many that are like, oh, this is now facts. And like, I think myself like, um, then you need to research a little bit more about you. Like, this is how journalists are supposed to be. And like, right. the person that kind of stuck out the most to me as like a journalist and and all these stuff is um, the old press secretary, Kyra Dukali or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and like, I really look up to her so much. Like, as, like, I watched her so much as she was press secretary. I still watch her now on Fox News a little bit. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. And like, she is really amazing how much she does. Like, I, like, every time I watch like an interview of hers or something, a briefing or something, I'm always in awe. Of her because like she's really amazing and always gives the facts always shuts people down when they're wrong and always mm -hmm. like, speaks her mind and there's not a lot of people like that and i was like Agreed. i and when i watch i'm thinking myself like, i want to be like that i want to become like what she does and actually speak my mind and do all these things and, i like, agree she's really someone that's really making an impact of course you have to be careful with you know the the networks and national they're more able to speak their mind than we are on a local level because we've got to be yeah. right down the middle and we can't really just blurt out our opinions but mm -hmm. i agree as a woman you want to be strong and you want to you stick to your guns and share your opinions with others you know even if it's not in the workplace just like every day having a conversation with anybody mm -hmm. um and i think what you just said is something really important to keep in mind mm -hmm, for sure so the final question is what is some advice for younger generations that could be a journal journalist reporter one day i think my biggest advice is going to be again dream big don't sell yourself short um people are going to tell you no mm -hmm. keep pushing but i also don't I always want to take a step back because I'm like, well, some people might not really thrive in this industry as well. So mm -hmm. know when to take a step back when it's appropriate. This industry is really hard. Yeah. And like I explained to you earlier, it is not glamorous by any means. So girls that are going to get into this industry hoping that they're going to get their makeup and hair done and everything's going to be written for them and they're just going to be on camera every day. That is so far from the truth. It's a lot yeah, of hard exactly. work. Yeah, like I said, it's a lot of grinding and you're doing a lot of things on your own. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. You got to come up with the story ideas. You got to make sure that this is really your one true love. Like you're really passionate and dedicated toward the career or I, I think it's really going to be a struggle for certain people. Yeah. Um, so I guess all in all, my biggest advice is figure out what you love. Do it. Don't let anybody tell you no keep pushing you're gonna fail get back up try again and just keep in mind nobody's perfect every day is another opportunity to learn something new and as long as you're continuously learning and growing and getting better and you're doing what you love you're on the right track exactly no matter how hard the thing is you got through it like, yep. like when i first started out i personally thought this was gonna be the easiest thing ever I was really? Like, oh, this, yeah, I really thought that. I was like, this thing's gonna be so easy. Like, I just have to do an interview, ask a couple questions, edit. Like, I know it was gonna be the best thing ever. Yeah. And now I think myself, like, what the hell is I thinking? Like, oh my gosh. Like, it's so hard. Like, I literally have to do the interview, <laughs> figure out questions, edit. And I'll do I, all it's these a lot. On my own. As a 15 year old girl, I'll do all these things on my own. I do not have other people to do this for me. Yes. And so I personally have to do this all alone. So I'm thinking myself, like, this is so difficult because I have to do this as a work, as a hobby, mm -hmm. I like to do. And at my personal life, like, work to have my family, going out with friends and doing all these things. Wow. I think myself, like, how am I supposed to balance all these things that really matter to me the most? And that's something that I had to struggle with. It's like, Sometimes I'm thinking to myself, like, God, I wish I could actually have more time to go out and do something for myself. I get it. I totally get it. That was me in college. I didn't have a lot of free time. But looking back, I'm glad that I worked so hard because now look where I am and now look where you are, right? Mm -hmm. So it paid off. And yeah, that's what's important. Perfect, like, know? I always told myself in college, there will always be another party, but there won't always be this great opportunity to help me thrive in my career. 
Exactly. Oh my God. I really mm-hmm. agree with that. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's so you're great welcome. You. You're so awesome. Uh, and we'll definitely speak soon for sure. Thank you so much, Quanon. So thanks great. for having me. This was fun. I appreciate you. And keep doing this podcast, okay? All right. I keep it up. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.